Hello and welcome to day three of our daily Bible reading. I'm just removing some of the sticky notes that I use as I take notes as I read my Bible and so the covering up chapter six which is where we are today Genesis chapter six we're going to start here and as usual we're going to just open in prayer so would you pray with me Father God as we read your word now speak to our hearts help us to have ears that hear what you would say to us help us to see clearly what is being said and help us Lord to see what this means for us today and how we can apply it in Jesus name Amen we're reading from Genesis chapter 6. This is introducing the flood of Noah. When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals, creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in all his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side make it with lower second and third decks for behold i will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven everything that is on the earth shall die but i will establish my covenant with you and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every sort shall come in to you to keep them alive. Also, Take with you every sort of food that is eaten and stored up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. So the first thing we, we need to point out was the condition of the earth at this time, the condition of mankind. And mankind, we see, uh, was confined to a, a fairly uh, narrow a part of the planet that usually seen as that East Africa Mesopotamia area probably now in Mesopotamia and so this was their world and they would refer to it as their world this is the earth as far as they, they understood as far as they knew it so this was the ark that, that the boat the box that's what an ark means that Noah was told to make let's continue reading chapter 7 then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens, also male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights. And every living thing that I have made, I will blot out from the face of the ground. 
And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the sixth, a hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife and three wives of his sons with them entered the ark, they and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the ground on the earth according to its kind, every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded, and the Lord shut him in. Verse 17, the flood continued 40 days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered, and the waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them 15 cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, or swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth. One hundred and fifty days. Chapter 8. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark, and God made a wind blow over the earth, and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained, and the waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated. And in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth, then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you, bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. 
Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal, some of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intentions of man's heart is evil from his youth. Never will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So we, we've come to the end of the flood and we are about to see in chapter 9 that the, that the flood has not solved the, the, the core problem at the heart of man, which is that now sin has infiltrated every heart. So Genesis chapter 9. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. And for your lifeblood, I will require a reckoning. From every beast, I will require it. And from man, from his fellow man, I will require a reckoning for the life of man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image, and you be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. Then God said to Noah and his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all earth. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The sons of Noah who went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the people of the whole earth were dispersed. Noah began to be a man of the soil, and he planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backward and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be to his brothers? He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. So this sets up the next chapter in, this, in the, the Genesis account. And here we have, the origin of the nations uh, shown through the three sons of, of uh, Noah. And so Shem, from whom come the Semites, the Semitic people. And then, of course, from Ham come the Canaanites. And we see the beginning of the hostility between them here in, in this chapter. Let's pray and ask God to speak to us. Father, as we look at your word now and we see that that, that sin is so rootly, so, so deeply rooted in the hearts of every person 
that this, this passage especially shows us that we need a saviour. We need a saviour. And Father, we, we, know, we now know what, what these guys didn't know, that you have sent your son as our saviour. And we thank you that Jesus Christ has come and not just saved us, but, but given us a new heart, a heart to honour you and to obey you, a heart of flesh, not of stone. And we thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you would help us to live out the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow for our next day of daily Bible reading.